Welcome to the Virtual Foundry Podcast. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Virtual Foundry Podcast. This is Volume 3, Episode 7. Today is Friday, June 17th, 2022. The time is 10.55 a.m. And the temperature here in southern Wisconsin today is a very lovely, sunny, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 24 degrees for you Celsius users. We are headed for an absolutely beautiful day and weekend. Today, we're going to be talking all about nozzles. I'm Trisha Cease, president of the Virtual Foundry, and with me as always is Brad Woods, founder, inventor, and all-around science guy. Say hello, Brad. Hi, everyone. So Brad, as you know, the nozzle is a very important part of 3D printing. It's that final piece between your filament and 3D printer and the object that you're building. Now, most of the time when you're printing in plastic, you use a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle. But the Virtual Foundry's filament, metal, glass, and ceramic 3D printing materials need a different type of nozzle. Uh, Brad, walk us through those basics. Right. So the nozzle in general is sort of the final determining factor on the resolution that you can get with an FDM or FFF 3D printed part. So if you have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and you have say a 90 degree turn, you're never going to have a radius that's less than 0.4 millimeters. So this is what I mean when I say that it determines the resolution. Um, with the virtual foundry materials, we recommend that people start with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and that it be hardened steel. And we sell these in our store. They're not hard to come by. You can get them from uh, various places, Matter Hackers, I'm pretty sure has them, not hard to come by. Most of what's out there right now are MK8 for eight millimeter. Um, there's still some lingering MK10s. Those were back from when Flash Forge was very popular, but they're, they're less common than they used to be. Most printers that use interchangeable nozzles right now are just MK8s. So most people just need a hardened steel MK8 nozzle that's 0.6 millimeters. Now we're we're talking about points using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle with the uh, Virtual Foundry's filament materials. When can you go smaller? When can you use a smaller diameter nozzle? For example, 0.4 millimeter, like we're used to. Right. All of the recommendations that we put out with our materials are to create the greatest probability that the user is going to have a positive experience. And what that means is that you can certainly go with a smaller nozzle. We have users that often run 0.4. We know that if you run a 0.6, it's going to be pretty rare that you have a clog. We know that if you run at 0.4, it's going to be marginally more common. And these aren't necessarily showstoppers and clogs happen in all types of FDM 3D printing, whether it's just, just plastic or whether it's our material. This is just kind of something that happens. And like I said, all of our recommendations are to, um, like I said, increase the probability that you have a positive experience, but it's not a rule. You can go smaller. And in fact, with our tungsten material, we've printed um, X-ray collimators with nozzles down to 0.3 millimeters. So very, very small. But when doing that, you wouldn't just hit print and walk away because there's a good chance it's going to clog. And if you're standing there, you just catch it, fix it and keep going. Um, can you tell us why it's more likely to clog at those smaller diameters? Yes. And what we can do about it. Right. And the, my best analogy here is a traffic jam. So like if you picture a construction site where you're going from three lanes of traffic down to two, and all of that traffic has to converge into a, a smaller area. If you picture all, all of our materials are filled with metal particles. And what happens is 
the end of the nozzle is conical. So it's converging down to, you're going from the width of the filament, which is 1.75 millimeters, down to the width of the very end of the nozzle itself at 0.6 millimeters. So you have to cram all those particles into that same amount of space or that smaller amount of space. And what happens is given enough opportunities for several of those particles to hit the nozzle at exactly the same time, it, it, it becomes greater. The smaller the nozzle is, the more likely it is that three are gonna hit, for example, three particles are gonna hit at ex exactly the same time and be unable to move forward. The workaround that we've come up with for this is to simply add some retraction. And as the particles re reach that nozzle uh, and periodic, periodically pulling the filament back a little bit, just it's sort of like tapping, tapping it loose and letting it flow through again. So we're talking about 0.6 millimeters really being that sweet spot. When do you need to go larger? Um, if you want to go faster, and that and that would be the, really the only reason to go uh, uh, to go larger, or if you're printing a very large part that doesn't need um, tight resolution and that kind of thing, then you can go larger. But in most cases, we find that people are pretty comfortable around 0 0.8, 0 0.6. And how about that high carbon iron filament? Yes, this is our material that has by far the largest particles. So um, whereas most of our materials have particles in the range of about 40 microns, some, some of the high carbon iron particles are closer to 80 to 100 microns, which is quite large. And I guess you could use an analogy of uh, either larger cars in a traffic jam or, uh, or, uh, or more lanes of traffic coming down to a single lane of traffic. So yes, we recommend a 0.8 with the high carbon iron. Now, how do you know when your nozzle is bad or when it's worn out? Um, <clears throat> two things here. So you'll start to see rough edges and you'll have problems with the material adhering to the bed. You'll have problems with one layer adhering to the one beneath it. Um, but that being said, when working with the high, or when working with the hardened steel nozzles, it's been our experience that it's just very rare for them to wear out. They last a very long time. And in fact, we tend to, you know, we'll discard them for other reasons, not just because they're worn out, but just because it's just time, just time to change it. They just don't, it's rare for them to wear out and for that to become a problem. Um, some of our materials are more abrasive than others. Uh, our tungsten and our silicon carbide are by far the most abrasive. And you can actually, your printing technique can actually have an effect on nozzle wear. So if you're heavily over, over extruding to the point where, say you get to the third layer, when you're printing the third layer and the nozzle is still dragging against the second, that'll accelerate the wear on the nozzle dramatically. And if you try this with a brass nozzle um, with, with silicon carbide or uh, or tungsten, it will grind it off and it will do it in one print. It's, it's, re it's remarkable. So we're talking about that need for the hardened steel with the filament materials by the virtual foundry. What about gem tipped nozzles? Lots of people ask about that. Is that necessary? Um, these work, they're very effective. And uh, they, in, for the most part, we find that they're overkill. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. We find that the hardened steel lasts longer because what will happen with the gems is that you'll eventually chip the edge of it or something like that. When you work for it with it for a long period of time, they're very, very strong as far as hardness goes, but they don't, but their strength isn't particularly high. You can chip it sort of like glass. You know, it's hard to wear glass, but it's not hard to break it. 
Um, so we find that the, uh, the, the hardened steel actually outlasts the gem-tipped nozzles. So where can you buy nozzles? The Virtual Foundry online store does offer the MK8 and MK10 varieties. We may add more varieties in the future. Right. Um, but beyond that, if your printer uses a specific kind of nozzle, you'll go back to your printer brand um, to get a 0.6 hardened steel nozzle. Um, and online shops like um, here in the US, Matter Hackers, uh, Canada, Canadian Additive, um, in Europe, you can check out Filament to Print. Um, so uh, other online stores or additive manufacturing stores will carry a nice variety of nozzles and you can get those anywhere you like. Yep. So Brad, I do have one more very important question for you before we wrap up today. Okay. Why did the cell phone get glasses? I have no idea. Because it lost its contacts. Uh, nice. Well, hey, if you've got a cool project you're working on, you want to showcase it in one of these podcasts, or if you've got a subject you'd like us to do a deep dive on in the future, reach out to us at info at the virtualfoundry.com. We'd love to do a podcast with or for you. In the meantime, um, check out the website, check out more videos on the YouTube channel. And till next time, happy printing, everybody. Thanks. Oh, I didn't ask. I didn't add my note. Hold on. Hang on. I just got to read this.